Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me an opportunity. Mr. Speaker, I wish to support with proposed amendments. And Mr. Speaker, in saying so, I just wish to also give an indication that um, I agree with the chairman of the legal committee that um, miscellaneous amendment bills are not supposed to deal with substantive issues, but disagree with him that this bill does not deal with substantive issues. There are actually substantive issues that are dealt with in this bill. And I would want to encourage that in future, as I've said countless times before, that when we are dealing with substantive, I mean, when we are dealing with miscellaneous amendments, it should not be touching on substantive issues. And Mr. Speaker, if you look at this, I've actually counted, I think, about 16 pieces of legislation that are being amended. And um, again, the chairman of the legal committee has indicated to us that their legal committee did public participation yesterday and has encouraged members of the House to look at the reports of the Justice Committee. And I'm sure the Justice Committee did not deal with the 16 pieces of legislation, because not all of them have to, are related to justice. For, for instance, the Civil Aviation Act, the Value Added Tax Act, the Privatization Act, amongst others. So there are quite a number, the Public Finance Management Act, the Universities Act. So they've gone to various committees. Now you can imagine, Mr. Speaker, if you are going to read all those reports, and the likelihood of this bill coming for the committee of the whole house tomorrow is very high if the, um, the practice of this house is anything to go by. And that is why we are very amenable to suits in court. I've said it, I said it to the speaker before, earlier today, and I will repeat it, that the other side has majority. I don't know where we are rushing to. It's basically the same way we are rushing to get loans all over and then saying that we are broke. I think we need to be very serious about, about the way we are dealing with issues as a country. Mr. Speaker, there are some um, minor amendments which I have no problem with, including the amendment, the proposed amendment to the Sexual Offences Act, uh, basically situating uh, the, the registry at a different uh, place. How I wish, though, that the, now that we are bringing substantive amendments through here, that we brought a more substantive amendment that is more thorny on the issue of the Sexual Offences Act, which is uh, where minors engage in sex with minors. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I have no problem with the proposed amendment to the Trustees Perpetual Succession Act, but I wish in that amendment they would have also brought amendments on how you change trustees when they leave or when they retire and that is uh, still problematic. On the issue of Utamaduni Day, I was actually very keen to listen to both the mover and the seconder to see what reason we want to remove Utamaduni Day other than the fact that it is aligned to Moi, and we may not like Moi for whatever reason. I may have no problem with Moi. I don't understand why we want to remove Utamaduni Day and yet we create impromptu environmental days or uh, tree planting holidays. Why can't we then use this Utamaduni Day to do every other thing, including planting trees, including uh, dancing and smiling, all those are Utam Utamaduni related issues. What's the point of order, leader? Okay, Honorable well, Speaker, it was not a point of order. I was seeking to inform Honorable Mer uh, Mili. I did not ask to be informed. I'm sorry. I'm on, sorry. On you cannot inform me. You order. asked that you are on a point of order. You are not provided with information. You cannot inform me without my permission. Order, I'm sorry. Order, 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 leader. You cannot inform me without my permission. Honorable Mili, order. Mr. Speaker, I've said it before this house before. I'm very fairly informed. I don't need Honorable Nchungwa to inform me. Uh, leader, did you want to inform Hon Mili? She says she doesn't want to be informed. If you have a point of order, then proceed. And I thought it was a point of order. Yes, Chair, because uh, Honorable Mili might not have been there when we were moving the bill. And uh, she is uh, debating the bill as it is published, but I did indicate uh, at moving that that clause is part of the items that we intend to amend for deletion because uh, there has been a change uh, following what happened on Otamaduni Day this year. So that particular day of 10th of October will remain being a public holiday and especially themed around the issue of climate change mitigation. 
and uh, as much as Millie did not want to be informed, it is good for her to just learn that without being informed, but now she can learn something. Uh, Chair, I like, to, I like to learn things which are substantive, which are intellectual. So I would want to encourage Honorable Echunga the next time you want to inform me, inform me at my intellectual capabilities. Don't inform me over mundane things like that. Because those are things that I just raise in passing. But I talk about issues of substance. Mr. Speaker, I have a problem with the proposed amendment to the Traffic Act, Section 1179 of the Traffic Act, which provides that if any unauthorized person removes a notice affixed on a vehicle or tears or defaces a notice, they are guilty of an offense and liable upon conviction to a fine not exceeding 200 shillings. I would want, with your permission, to say it in Kiswahili, shilingi miambili. And with your permission, I can say it in, tu, in Kijaluo, shilingi miareo. Order, Mili. I, I sought your permission, uh, Mr. Speaker. I never gave you any permission to go I do, I do apologize, then. Proceed, Mili. Um, and Mr. Speaker, the reason why I'm saying that is that this amendment seeks to, to move that fine from 200 Kenya shillings to 200,000 Kenya shillings. And a fine of 500 Kenya shillings to 500,000 Kenya shillings. And I am actually sad that I was not here when Enda Beichunga was moving the tax policy. And your tax policy must be anchored on what you promised, which was, uh, what are these people you are calling, what were they called? Uh, hustlers. Which else are you going to find for removing a notice of a car Half a million Kenya shillings. Are you living in Utopia? Leader, are you living in mass? Order. Are you crazy? Are you mad? Are you mental? Order, you need Mimi. a mental checkup? Order. This is, you are taking Kenya's Mimi, place. Order. I'll still give you your time. This is the sweetness of debate. What's your point of order, uh, leader? Honorable well, Speaker, is a member really in order? And you've had the kind of uh, unpalatables she is spewing or asking whether people are crazy, whether they are sick, Honorable Speaker. But more importantly, we are debating the Statute Miscellaneous Amendment Bill. And we debated, concluded debate on the tax policy motion, which was passed this morning. As usual, Milio Diambo was not in the House. Uh, I'm not sure whether she contributed to the tax policy. And probably to also understand that fines are to deal with people who have a penchant of breaking the law. People who believe that laws are there not to be followed. And therefore, Honorable Speaker, I would want you to, to get the Honorable Emilio Diambo to restrict herself to the debate on the issues here. The tax policy debate was concluded and we voted on it in the morning. Honorable Speaker, we are there for debating the statute miscellaneous bill and she can uh, restrict. I had her say that she wants to engage in intellectual uh, arguments, Honorable Speaker. And you know, I have tremendous respect for a lady like her. But when she, she engages in epithets, Honorable Speaker, I may not be able to engage to lower myself to that level. You know, the Please, Honorable Mili, proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I just want to inform, or not inform, but indicate that this is what I was talking about when I talk of intellectual engagement. If you listen carefully, you should know that as an esteemed lawyer, when I speak about the rules of the house, so I have made a connection between this law and the tax rule. It is actually completely and utterly allowed under our procedures. I made a connection. And I made a connection that says that their policy must be linked with the law that they pass. Your, law, your policy cannot be divorced from the law. The law must follow the policy. So I want to tell Honorable Mami Chungwa that indeed he knew. He actually prophesied that I was going to say something about him. That's why he preempted. And I will repeat, are you mental? Are you out of your mind? Think about Kenyans that you are harassing. Order. Which Kenyan is going to pay half a million Kenya shillings for removing a Order. small piece of paper off a car? Order. You are Order. very unserious. Order, Order, Mili. Order, Mili. Honestly, you are doing very well, but the language... 
you don't need to use unpalatable language in the house and therefore uh, well that's Spain but uh, the language is not proper leader Mimi is already on the uh, Mimi is already on uh, is already finished but if you want to say something we shall allow you a chance to speak so give a leader a chance to to debate intellectually but i don't know what intellectuals spew filth out of their mouths honorable speaker i don't know what intellectual order leader is there Again, a spew order epithet order you know you are standing on a point of order because of the unpalatable language by Mili. Unfortunately, you are going the same direction. Could you please, you are fully protected, but please don't use unpalatable language. Give leader one minute to hear him. And no, but speaker, I was saying, you must protect the dignity of this house. If I question your sanity today, Honorable Speaker, and you let it go, Honorable Speaker, tomorrow nothing stops me from repeating it. I have never questioned the sanity of Mili Odiambo. There are things that may, may, may occasion me to want to question it, but I cannot question it unanswered. Honorable Speaker, it is that that I needed you to make a direction and to have it expand on the answer. Otherwise, I can choose also to get to that level of spill epithets that are not adding any intellectual value to the debate that is before the house and I would expect if you claim to be an intellectual debate intellectually don't throw insults and then the speaker if it is insults you know some of us don't need to go to any school to learn insults but I want to uphold the dignity of this house even for those I feel are not dignified thank you I have made your point what's your point of order on the ball yeah give me the mic Rosa Boyu. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you for this opportunity. Oh. Mr. Speaker, I stand on standing order 35. The House lacks the requisite quorum to continue with this debate. That might calm down some of these members. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Very well, a member has risen from this place on standing order number 35 on the issue of quorum. So the sergeants, please ring the quorum bell.